have been flocking to this Suffolk town for more than a thousand years. Today, it's not the Shrine of St Edmund I'm seeking out, but a modern engineering marvel that's growing fruit and veg on the heat emitted from waste. My journey into this fresh food innovation begins at a less than palatable source just outside town, a plant treating wastewater and sewage. So David, can you give me an idea of what is actually going on here and kind of how much waste you are treating every day or every second? Yeah, we're treating around about, uh, well, up to 475 litres per second um, on this actual site. The movement and microbial action that takes the solid, dirty stuff out heats the water up to as much as 20 degrees Celsius. It's a natural part of the treatment process and that would be, that would be wasted. Here, that heat, which would otherwise go to waste, is extracted. This is the, the heat exchanger building. It's really the end of the process for us on the site. The exchanger takes the heat out of the processed wastewater, which is now clean and cool enough to go back into surrounding waterways. The heat left behind is transferred into a separate, sterile circuit pipe that runs for almost two and a half kilometres under fields to this sprawling oasis, a greenhouse some 1.25 kilometres square. Well, it's only when you get a bit higher that you really appreciate the scale of this place. This is the mm. single biggest greenhouse unit in the UK and is capable of producing 22 million peppers per year. That is a hell of a lot. It's one of two greenhouses built to use heat emissions from adjacent sewage plants to grow peppers, cucumbers and tomatoes. This one, just outside Bury in Suffolk, the other just over the county border in Norfolk. Behind each greenhouse is an array of pumps which pushes that heat into the structures all year round. As the developer's senior manager, Ben Alexander, explains, 93 to 95% of the heat needed to maintain growth comes from the wastewater plants. That reduces the overall carbon footprint by an estimated 75% compared to a standard heated greenhouse. We're taking heat from a heat pump rather than burning fossil fuels. And that heat we're able to put around the greenhouse in order to help us grow food and create the absolute perfect conditions for growing fruit and veg. The heating elements have been cleverly built into the rails that run along seemingly endless rows of vibrantly coloured peppers. Can I try it? You can try it now if you want to try. Mm, it's good. It's very sweet. I think it's very nice straight off the plant, which yeah. is another advantage to growing in England. Brian Hibbard is the long-standing managing director of Abbey View Produce, which has a 20-year lease to grow crops here. He says the peppers grown in this single greenhouse alone could replace around 5% of imports. We've been supplying supermarkets for many years and this project is replacing what probably would have been Dutch produce coming into England and at the beginning and end of the season some Spanish product. So it gives a healthier product, a lot less food moles and it's the way I've always wanted to go. Just months into the first growing season, the 300,000 plants in this single greenhouse are bearing fruit. Earnings are also growing for the investor. Hi, James. Afternoon. My name's Persis, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Greencoat Capital provided the 120 million pounds needed to build the two greenhouses. Earning rent, heating charges, and a vital government bonus in return. For each megawatt hour of heat that we sell them, we claim a thing called the Renewable Heat Incentive, which is a government subsidy for renewable heating. In this case, it provides more than half of the revenue returns, and Greencoat Capital says its greenhouses would not be viable without it. But that subsidy is due to close to new projects from March 2022, and similar incentives may well be needed for other innovative carbon-saving designs like these to take root and flourish.